I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Monday, February the 5th, brought to you in part by Macrosyn by Bimeda. Macrosyn has been granted the same label claims as Draxon by the FDA with identical comparisons, except Macrosyn is more affordable and made in North America. For more information, go to macrosyn.com. Also, Joplin Regional Stockyards, another big sale. They're, they're the biggest stockyard in the nation. Uh, according to receipts and they're going to have uh, 15,000 head of cattle for the regular Monday sale. This market is just pulling cattle out of the woodwork guys and they are going to have acres and acres of yearlings and miles and miles of weaned calves. Uh, I talked to Skyler Moore there over the weekend and he said oh, he said they're just coming from everywhere and uh, they're going to be starting really early guys They'll be going long. They'll be going up and selling long before five o'clock a.m. Uh, you can always view that sale there at dvauction.com. So check out Joplin Regional Stockyards for the big sale here on Monday. Rare grassroots victory in Orlando. Now, I've been talking about this quite a bit, and I'm going to put it to bed here, and I'm not going to talk about it for the most part uh, anymore. But uh, the big issue that we had there uh, was the policy vote on the disease traceability or the, uh, the EID bill that uh, everybody was getting really excited about. Uh, they, were, they were getting excited about some things that were said on this uh, program or this uh, YouTube video, but uh, it uh, really got heated there. And I tell you what, whenever, whenever this uh, thing all first come up, and it's only been going on here for the last couple of weeks, that we actually knew uh, what was in there, what one of those uh, directives was, that it was, it was actually literally asking USDA to, uh, to come up with rules for EID immediately on, on uh, uh, 18, 18 months and older cattle and within less than two years all classes of cattle and this still was just kind of slipped in there nobody uh, paid too much attention to it or something and then some people started uh, uh, making me aware of it and I'm reading it and looking at it and calling around asking some questions and this is a train wreck no way this is gonna happen so like I always do uh, I tell you people that watch this uh, uh, this video and I tell you what I think about it and and I don't have to call somebody and ask them what to think. I don't have to get the approval uh, for what I should think or what I should say. And, and I just, uh, whenever I read this and looked at it and wanted to talk about it, I said, hmm, this is going to be bad for sale barns and bad for small producers. So uh, it, it doesn't pass my smell test. It's not good. That's, that's the two things I care about the most in this industry is the sale barns and the small producers. So I immediately started talking about it, but all the way leading up to early last week, I didn't think that there was any prayer that we would get this thing stopped or, or watered down. I thought they were just going to cram it right down their throats. Uh, your, your three big affiliates, Texas Cattle Feeders Association, Kansas Livestock Association, and Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, they wanted it and put together they got so many votes so you can't hardly uh, knock them off their stool so and then they had some other states that really didn't understand that were voting on their side and you know how when you get into politics even cattle politics you help me get my issues through and I'll help you get your issues through and so it just looked like there was no no need really to harp about it but it was so important to me and then as I started bringing it to light I found out that it was so important to a lot of really influential people in this industry. Uh, down in the sale barn in the backgrounding order buying part of the realm. Now none of your feedlot people were really worried about it because they weren't going to have to do anything. Maybe scan them on the way in but if there was any benefit in it they stand uh, stood to gain the benefit. So sale barn people weren't worried about it, or I mean the feedlot people weren't worrying about it, and of course the packers loved it, so you never heard anything about them. Uh, and a lot of times your sale barn people, uh, order buyers and backgrounders, uh, and small producers, 
they don't get too uh, involved in, in these things, in, in these associations and the voting and all that kind of stuff. But this still was going to come down. But early last week, when we were getting ready to head to Orlando, uh, then we saw the big associations that want this, uh, namely Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, trying to cancel me or censor me or get me fired or, or somehow just get rid of me. Uh, then I thought, whoa, maybe we are going to get something done on this because they've been getting some blowback. Uh, apparently, a lot of you people that are uh, members of these associations started calling and you were doing a lot of good. And I can't do anything. All I do is put out uh, information. I put that information out. They said it was wrong. They said oh, there's no mandatory in there anywhere about it. It looks just like the one uh, that they tried to do there uh, many years ago and it didn't get any beef cattle, but the dairy cattle have been mandatory ever since. So that's the way it was going to start. Dairy cattle, all mandatory, which they are, which is not as big a deal because the dairies have, uh, most of them use that for record keeping and they have good facilities. And then they were going to go to 18 uh, um, months and old on cattle, all breeding age cattle. And then they were going to go to all classes. And I mean, you, you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to look at it, that uh, it was pretty soon going to be completely mandatory on everything. That's what they wanted. Uh, the problem was, I tipped people off. I tipped off the, uh, the general public and they did not like it. And if you're a member association and you don't want to receive calls from your members to tell you how they feel, I don't know how legitimate you are. Uh, but uh, basically what we had was a, a microphone measuring contest and they got really upset because my microphone is bigger than theirs and you think you can take somebody uh, that, that does a, a program like this and I've got so many of you loyal listeners out there my feeder flash gang members I just love you love you when people come up and tell me that they like to watch this but it's really grown. I didn't start doing this yesterday. I, you know, and, and all these, these uh, different things that I talk about on here are just my views. And that's why we have a statement at the end of this video every time that says these are just Corbett's views. Uh, they, does not, um, they do not reflect uh, DV Auctions views, any of the advertisers, anything like that. But people like to watch. But if you don't have the stomach to watch, don't watch. But apparently the haters are watching too. They're probably uh, finding out some information and getting educated on here also. But, uh, you know, we've got a big microphone. You know, our YouTube, just on YouTube, uh, we, we, uh, we've got about 150,000 views on YouTube every month. Uh, we've got 16,750 subscribers to YouTube. Uh, and then that's just YouTube. Now, on the National Beef Wire, uh, which is our information uh, website, we've got 155,000 electronic newsletters that we send out every single day that includes this video, and that's not on YouTube. That's, that's separate. I mean, we, yeah, we got, we got some stroke people, and, and uh, like a buddy of mine told me a long time ago when I was just a market reporter uh, for the government, uh, I asked him if he disagreed with the way I called the market and he said, hey, I learned a long time ago not to argue with people that buy ink by the barrel. Well, it's a little more modern that than that, but it's still the same. And, you know, maybe some people uh, try, ought to try to talk to me and if they think that I'm getting this wrong, uh, they can talk to me. Now, the big associations, uh, the big affiliates, I never hear anything from. Walked around that trade show uh, in Orlando for three days. Nobody ever came up and talked to me from any of the affiliates. Uh, they just badmouthed me at their fancy dinners uh, at night and, and talked to me, uh, talked about me in the, in the committee rooms, uh, by, but not calling me by name in the committees. But, you know, when you, the higher you get, yeah, whenever you get up to the, to the national level in CBA, I do hear from people there. Ethan Lane, uh, I've talked to him several times. Uh, Don Schiefelbein, the past president, uh, he's, he's got balls to call you out on stuff. Uh, he, just, he would just call my cell phone and just and tell me what he thought. 
and we would have conversations. I don't know that he ever changed my mind, but he earned my respect. And, and he talked to me there at, uh, towards the end of the conference there, and he said, well, the deal worked. He said, it, it was grassroots, and he's not lying. So I, I think the whole deal worked. They weren't able to just cram it down our throat because we had enough people uh, that got educated enough about what was going on, found out about it, and had the nerve to call their affiliates. And then as it was going through uh, the motion there, of course, they were going to make sure they had the votes before they brought it up on Thursday morning's uh, vote uh, in the committee hearings. And likely with just those three, it was basically just those three, Texas Cattle Feeders, Kansas Livestock Association, and Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. It was them against the field for the most part. And even though they still probably would have won, uh, the, the leadership at the top of the NCBA said, you know, maybe, maybe this is, is splitting us up too much. Maybe this is too polarizing. Maybe, perhaps, we're not ready for it. You think? So, but you know, so uh, cooler heads prevailed. They watered the thing down, uh, and then they watered it down, and then they watered it down, and by the time they voted on it, it was really nothing other than NCBA supports EID, but nothing mandatory and nothing asking USDA to, to push anything. Uh, NCBA can't make laws, but whenever they make uh, they make their uh, and their wishes known uh, their policies well then NCBA takes that as that's what the cattle people think but evidently it wasn't quite what the cattle people thought yet now I think this is coming I told you on the last visit I think it's coming I think they'll probably try to cram it down their throat at one of the summer sessions at the summer conference that's when they do things that they want to get done without a lot of people noticing. Uh, many, many years ago, that's when Beef Association, the Cattlemen's Association mixed and literally uh, meant that the fox was going to be living right in the hen house. And that's one reason uh, that things like this come up nowadays is because there's not very many people there. It doesn't attract a lot of attention and they get things done. But I'm going to try to keep my ear to the ground uh, you guys usually do a good job of keeping me informed, but uh, we got to push back for, for right now. And I'm not saying it wouldn't be great. It would be great if every single hoof of cattle uh, had an ear tag in it that was EIDs and it was easy to scan them and get 100% readers on that. But you can't do any of that. It's just like counting cattle. If you don't count them all, what good did it do to count them? And so, uh, you know, it was... Uh, and what I really would like to know, what I would really, really like to know is what's the motivation? What's the motivation from those big affiliates to try to cram this down when they knew damn well that most of their members were not going to like it? And I'll let you guys think about that. But last week, prices on all classes of cattle were nearing all-time highs. Fat cattle, feeder cattle, calves, everything. The market was great. Uh, we, we found out we had the fewest cattle in the United States than we've had in 75 years. Uh, big, big news there. Everything's bullish fundamentally, and the board's been cooperating. Uh, for the most part, it's been a bunch higher. I mean, we're riding on a, a high rail. Uh, I think we're going to push things a little, little higher than we've ever seen them before. Of course, then they get top heavy. Everybody gets nervous, and then a lot of those people that... Uh, just kind of take advantage of the, of the cattle futures. They'll want to ride it down, and, and they, you know, there's a long ways down to go. But for right now, things are, are, are uh, excellent in the markets. Let's talk about your uh, board for last week. February live cattle futures. Monday was down a buck seven. Tuesday was up 65. Wednesday was down 67. Thursday was up 240. Friday up 80 cents. February ended the week at 180.55, up 210 for the week. April ended the week at 183.75, up 208. March feeder cattle down 107 on Monday, up 270 on Tuesday, down 117 on Wednesday, up 472 on Thursday. I mean, it's like watching a tennis match vertically. And Friday down seven cents with March feeder cattle ending the week at 244.80, up 410 for the week. April ended the week at 250.20 
up 460 for the week. March corn ended the week at 442 and three quarters. That was down three and a half cents a bushel. March beans ended at 1188 and a half, down 20 and three quarters cent a bushel. And Kansas City hard red winter wheat for March ended the week at 625, which was up a quarter cent a bushel for the whole week. Fat cattle trade through Thursday, they'd sold 45,700 negotiated in your five area feeding re region. Uh, live prices on fat steers and heifers in the five area ranged from 173 to 179. That was steady to a buck higher than the previous week. Your weighted average on live steers, 177.74, $2.30 higher than the previous week's weighted average. Dress sales. Fat steers and heifers in the five area was from 277 to 28075. That was 275 to three dollars higher. Your weighted average on dress steers was 27943, two dollars and fifty six cents higher than the previous week's dressed weighted average. Significant gains there. Friday we had some more trade, but not a whole lot. Iowa sold 3700 head, 16,700 for the week. 177 to 178.50 live uh, and some 280 dressed. Nebraska 1500 for the week, 15 or 1500 on Friday, 15,000 for the week, 176 to 177, and uh, dress trade at 280.75. Kansas 150 hit on on Friday, which is nothing, and 14,300 for the week, which is quite a bit for Kansas. Uh, and all they had on Friday was 179, which is very impressive, and that was just on mixed bag cattle. Texas didn't have any sales on Friday, 5100 for the week. Uh, your, your cash market in the Southern Plains was three to four higher. Northern Plains was one and a half to two dollars higher, and dress sales three bucks higher. Box beef cutout values. Your weighted average on all of last week's choice cuts: 295.61, down 420. Uh, and your late Friday sales, Friday afternoon sales, were $2.50 less than that weighted average at two ninety three, dollars just pennies over that. Uh, your, weighted, or your weighted average on all of last week's select sales was down two forty eight at two eighty five thirty five, dollars and your late Friday quote on your selects was two eighty three forty seven, dollars about two bucks less than the weighted average. All of this on 591 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings, which is pretty decent. Your slaughter last week was the biggest we've seen for quite a while. 629,000, that's 16,000 more than the previous week, 12,000 more than the same week a year ago. Uh, your Saturday kill was just 8,000. Uh, if it would have been decent, that would have been a significant kill for last week. But talk about what else is going on. Ever.ag. Ever Ag Risk Management specializes in cattle and grain brokerage, insurance services, uh, and then all of your USDA policies, DRP, LRP, LGM, and PRF, advisory services to buyers and sellers of grain products, and vault software technology. For more information, go to ever.ag. Talk about your feeder cattle market for last week. Your real-time index, uh, based on the 800-pound cash auction steer coming from DV Auction up through your middle 12 states, uh, ended the week at 239.52. That was three dollars and 76 cents higher than it ended the previous week. Big-time gain there. Uh, your last uh, established CME cash feeder cattle index was 239.17. Cash feeders and your sales, three to eight bucks higher. Calves last week, 10 to 20 bucks higher. Uh, instances more, some places a lot more. Just big, big gains. I mean, they just came right after them last week. And the beautiful weather we had last week around uh, was part of that blame. But we're going to have big sales everywhere on Monday, and I assume all of them will be higher again because the market was more higher late in the week than it was earlier in the week. Uh, like I said, Joplin's going to have that huge sale of 15000 Oklahoma National Stockyard is going to have 12000 or more. Big sales. Talk about your, your biggest sales late last week and over the weekend. How about Fort Scott Livestock Market? Fort Scott, Kansas. They had 4,300 head. DV Auction Broadcaster there. Uh, the market was all higher. You can see the changes on your National Bee Fire Stick Out Sale of the Day. Automated Mark Report. Look at your steers, 635 head of six weight steers in Fort Scott 
Average 662 at 253.23. 373 had a seven weight steers. Average 741 at 242.75. 605 had of eight weight steers. Average 852 at 228.27. And 709 had a nine weight steers. Average 936 at 219.51. Look at the heifers. 281 had a five weight heifer calves. Average 553 at Fort Scott, Kansas. The weighted average price of 246.65. 401 had a six weight heifers. 646 on the average. 233.17 weighted average price. 230, 234 had a seven weight heifers. Average 735 at 221.21. And 282 head of eight weight heifers in Fort Scott, Kansas. Averaged 818 pounds with a weighted average price of 210.73. How about some stick out sales from all around? Nevada Livestock Marketing. Uh, my buddy's way out in Fallon, Nevada. Uh, they did a great job. They had they threw an extra feeder special there because everybody was wanting to sell and everybody was wanting to buy. How about this? A hundred head, 490 pound steers in Fallon, Nevada at $323 a hundred. Wow. How about Vertigree Stockyards in Vertigree, Nebraska? Another DV auction broadcaster. 66 head, 682 pound steers. Bring 290.75. Uh, but the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere late last week or over the weekend in your macros and no BS top quote for the day come out of Erickson Livestock Market in Erickson, Nebraska. They had about 4,300 head for their sale. Some fancy steers. There were 74 head of them. Weight 602 and bring 318.50. And that's your feeder flash for Monday.